Hello everyone, this is Rahul Pawar and welcome to my YouTube channel, Express Your Data. In today's video, we are going to discuss about interview questions that were asked in Wells Fargo. So before I get started, let us thank our subscriber for sharing the questions and his interview experience so that it can be of help to others who are watching. So don't forget to like, share and subscribe to this channel because regularly we'll be posting videos of different companies and interview related experience. So let it get started without wasting much time. So like you all know, the company was Wells Fargo and the role was Tableau developer and more of like a data engineer because the expected skills were, you know, uh, had many things that required, like say they requested or expectation is that, you know, user, sorry, developer is aware of Tableau desktop and Tableau prep also. And along with that Snowflake, the candidate is aware of some basic you know, programming uh, language of Python and then uh, Tableau server. And they were also expecting Informatica as an application because uh, so that was the you know job description that was specified and the candidate fell into that because he was aware of most of the skills and uh, interview was scheduled with him. And this was the first uh, level of interview after the HR discussion. And let us see what were the questions that were asked. So first, like I said, introduce yourself is one of the most prominent questions and one of the most common interview question that we might get, you know, as the first question. And we all know by now what we need to answer. So it should cover like what we have done, what we have done, what are our our achievements, what kind of dashboards we have created and uh, in short, what are our roles and responsibilities. So this is what we need to cover uh, in this. And while describing this, we also need to cover some points related to your uh, you know, the expertise or the skill that is being expected so that this gives, you know, some more marks to your introduction because uh, interviewer will know that, okay, you have worked on Tableau desktop or you have worked on Tableau prep and you have used Snowflake and Tableau server and Informatica. <coughs> Sorry for that. So this is how you need to create your uh, introduction. Or, you know, you can adjust it according to uh, the level that you are, you know, uh, applying for or the skill set that is being requested so that you can gain some more marks here. Next was what is what kind of data sources you are using for your data. So here, like, you know, what are the different data sources like you are using Snowflake or uh, you're using Redshift or SQL Server or anything like MangoDB, anything, whatever you are using you can mention here so try to mention at least two different types of data sources so it can be anything it can be your sql server it can be your teradata or it can be your snowflake or it can be your redshift it can be anything okay so just try to give some options here so that you know uh, interviewer will know that you have worked on multiple you know different interfaces and you are aware how uh, you know, to write queries at different levels. So that is one advantage you might get when you when you tell that, you know, you have awareness of you know, writing this. See, end of the day, whatever, wherever you write, most of the SQL format will remain same. Okay. So you, you need not worry about that. It is just that, you know, we know the application thoroughly. That is one thing that we can come out, take it out from here. The next is what is your Tableau version and earlier version? And what is the difference you have observed? That was the question. So here, I think again, many of us, you know, uh, fail to give a proper answer. Some say they have used 2010 version, uh, 2010 version. So always try to, you know, keep this updated and, you know, see what is the latest, latest version available and what is you are using. So at least try to know, you know, what is available. Like say, as of now, I think 2022.4, uh, some version is there, three or four. So 
that is the latest version that is available and uh, organizations are somewhere here like say 2021.12 or 3 it can be like this so when you are telling this it is always better to tell what is the latest capabilities that a new version has so if you are trying to tell that to the interviewer you will always get you know good marks in that kind of situation like say in in the late, uh, recently released tableau version you know many new things have come up like say proper function is now available in tableau okay mm -hmm. now what this proper function does so it will you know correct your uh, no, uh, words like say here i am writing as rahul power but it will when i use proper case it will give me in a proper case so we have uh, some related functions related to this like say upper which will convert into upper case and we have lower which will convert into your lower case now we have a proper function which will convert it into proper case like that okay so this was the new function that was introduced in tableau and there are many other things but just for example i am telling you so if you are able to explain like these points to the interviewer he will know that okay you are following regularly following what are the updates that are there in the market for the tableau and what is that they are trying to bringing like that so it will it gives a positive score for him next is what is your site role in tableau again you know many uh, get confused here or you know many get numb here like what should i tell what is should be my role so for all those who are working they can clearly tell here but for all others who are trying to keep something so most of the time as a developer you will have access publisher uh, explorer who can publish option explorer plus publish and if you are the only developer you might have site admin who can take care or you might also be creator if you are the only person as a developer who is working in the time in the team and your task is to take care of the entire server then you can be someone from this but if you are working in a team then you and you are working in a very big team then your access will be very limited like say explorer plus publish means you will just have the option to publish the report that's it all other actions will be taken care by other team members who have access so it depends on company to company organization to organization and from team to team so but it is always better to know what are the different levels of permissions we have in tableau and what is that each will have so you can watch my tableau server playlist for this so that you can get some awareness on all of the different things that can be done as a developer okay so next are like what is physical and logical layer and what are relationships so these are the latest concepts that were introduced in tableau sorry for that again so it is mostly related to how you are you know connecting two tables so one is where you are actually making joints and unions and again the other one like say logical layer and physical layer physical layer is where you are actually making joints and unions and you know trying to connect with multiple tables whereas your logical layer is where you are actually using relationships to blend multiple tables here okay so that is something that you can always talk about on this concept and what is parameter we know what is parameter parameter is something that is introduced to bring in interactivity to add dynamicity to your reports like that again what is lods lods are level of detail expressions that we know and you can always talk about how many types of lods are there and how we can you know define an lod what are the different types of uh, scoping words are there you can always talk about that and it is always better to have at least one use case ready for this because we might get one like he might ask what is the example you have used or what is the use case or have you ever implemented in your project so that kind of questions you might get on lods so always you know be prepared for this so what is lod 
uh, definition here and then types and uh, scoping words working and uh, example so i want you guys to be ready with all of this five when lod related question is being asked because definitely if not in one interview it might be of help for other interviews so be prepared on this you will definitely get questions related to what is the LOD scenario you have implemented in your project. So in that kind of situations, I don't want you guys to freeze. You can talk about one example. Again, if you are unclear how or what LOD does, you can definitely watch my LOD videos. You know, I've come up with some you know very e easy explanation and I have uh, given some use cases which you can definitely talk in the interview. So next is what is the role level security? Again, whenever you are working for banking transactions, security is of utmost importance to a, to them. So you will be asked to implement role level security to the data. Now there are multiple ways where we can implement these scenarios. So we can use the user filter from Tableau server or we can use a database approach like that so all of that is again discussed in a detailed video i'll post the link of this in the description box do don't forget to watch that because it is very important and it, there are very high chances that you might implement them in real time okay so i'll paste the link of this in the description now difference between uh, increment refresh and a full refresh so whenever you are scheduling your extract to run okay there are two ways where we can do full refresh or incremental refresh. Full refresh means it will recreate the entire extract. Incremental refresh means only the new records are getting appended to the already existing extracts. So here you can make this decision based on how much of volume you are getting every day or how much of new records you are getting every day. Based on that, we can decide. Suppose every day you are getting 10 million new records, then you are already it is 20 million records so every day you are adding 10 million is better than you know creating 30 million records every day like that so choose wisely based on the volume of your data symbol next is what is embedded and published data source again this is one question where i have seen many fail to answer published data source means you know uh, it can be used for different workbooks or it can be used against multiple workbooks uh, as a data source to create a workbook like that. Whereas embedded data source means it is very limited to that particular workbook that you are trying to publish. Suppose I'm publishing a report today, okay, with embedded data source. So this workbook will now, or this data source can only be used in this workbook one, that's it. It cannot be used beyond that. But if I am publishing it as a published data source, I can use my data source for other reports as well. Okay, so that is the difference between embedded and published data source. Next is what is difference between union and union all? Again, one common question that might come in SQL also. So union all, both will actually you know merge the records from two tables or two files whenever the structure is same but one will get with duplicate records and another is without duplicate records. So that is the only you know, difference that you need to talk about whenever you are talking about union and union all. Again, what is context filter? I think by all, we all know what is context filter. You can try to answer in the description box, we'll check. And next, what will you do in order to get data updated? So this is one common issue we might get as a developer in real time. So. Sometimes what happens is data will not get refreshed. Okay, so clients might reach you, like say, Rahul, you know, I'm not seeing the latest data. What will you do? So first thing that we need to do is check, check if the job that is, you know, scheduled to run is uh, executed or executed successfully or not. That is the first thing that we need to check. If it is executed, then see if, if it has brought any new records or not. Then check if it failed, then you can rerun. But before that, you need to check 
if your database has any new records or not. That also you need to see because end of the day, what are we doing? We are trying to bring in whatever the information that is available in the database. So if we do not have any new information in the data source, then it is no point like that. So first you need to check this also. If your database is refreshed and if it has new records, then that is there or not. So two things you always need to parallel. So for us, our base point is always data source. So whatever is available in our data source or in our database, we are trying to showcase that in the tape in the report. One thing that you always need to keep in mind. So if a database has new records, Tableau should also show. So if it is not showing, what is getting failed? Is your refresh failed? Then rerun it. Or when you refreshed, but database was not updated that time, then you need to rerun that to get the new data like that. So you all need to perform this step, this steps to get the latest data. So you can talk like that. So, so that he knows what should be done to fix this issue. So again, difference between inner join and left to join. This is one common question that has become viral. So we need to know the behavior of data with respect to different joins. Okay, so that is the bottom line here. So what kind of records we get when we say inner? So only common records here. Inner means common records from both tables. Left means again, all the records from left to table and left to plus common records like that. Okay, so I've prepared a video on this again. I'll try to post link of this that this question on join is very important and I'm requesting everyone to you know, thoroughly prepare for this question because there are very high chances that you might get a question on this. Okay. So have you worked with row level security? How do you implement? Again, I think we have discussed above. So I'll post the link of this in the description box. You can go through that and all of that is very important. Okay. So I think that's it from my side in this video. I hope this video has helped you. If it does, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.